Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, as was the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night where you guys are out there in the world. So, listen, this month has already been eventful when it comes to the anti crypto approach. Uh, there's been a lot of big updates regarding Elizabeth Warren and her anti crypto crusade. There's been a lot of things happening on the back end uh, that a lot of people are not aware of as well. That's been really kind of, I would argue, brewing for a few years now. Um, and I do think that everyone needs to be aware of what's really going on. So first and foremost, let's start off with this post by Fox Business, where it says Treasury deals blow to Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto crusade. For anyone that is not aware at this point, which I think everyone should be, um, Elizabeth Warren did introduce a, a bill. And it's um, about anti-money laundering and things like that. But what she really isn't saying is the fact that it is a blatant ban on crypto. It's pretty much a, a cutthroat way to say, all right, let's introduce this idea of anti-money laundering, which is a great you know, topic. I mean, technically speaking, there is money laundering happening around crypto, not nearly as much as what's happening around fiat currencies. Um, it's probably a very small percentage of the market arguably but anyone on congress right they're going to read that first title and say all right well this is actually beneficial let's sign off on this and that's where the manipulation really happens because when you actually look into the bill you can clearly see how cutthroat it is for the entire crypto industry it's a big problem Eleanor Tourette is the, is the one that actually wrote this article. And we have new from me, Treasury deals blow to Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto crusade. And the whole premise of this is the fact that a top official in the Treasury Department's Terrorism and Financial Intelligence Office debunked Senator Elizabeth Warren's past claims that cryptocurrency is chiefly responsible for funding Middle East terrorist outfits. And again, Elizabeth Warren, everything that she says about crypto has been debunked multiple times in the past. It's kind of crazy at this point that this is someone that even has a voice around this space. But it's also crazy that she even has a voice in general. This is an absolute clown. This is also somebody who has been uh, talking about for years and years and years about sustainability while flying around on a private jet. This is also somebody that has a massive net worth while making a six figure salary. I mean, when you look at these people, it's comical gary gensler right we all know gary gensler he's worth over a hundred million dollars plus and he's banked with vanguard and he's going after crypto heavily are we supposed to just believe that that is a coincidence these people are complete clown shows and they all support one thing and that's the banking sector they don't care about anything else but also over here, we have Elizabeth Warren, fake news and USDC compliance. Circle, Paul Barron, Senator Elizabeth Warren in December of last year claimed that digital assets firms in the U.S. are attempting to subvert anti-money laundering and terrorist finance laws. I believe that her claims are frankly blatantly false. Big shout to XRP Drops for this. Check this out. Senator Elizabeth Warren in December of last year claimed that digital asset firms in the United States are attempting to subvert anti-money laundering and terrorist finance laws. I believe that her claims are frankly blatantly false, and I think it is important to remind the public of all the work that your companies do to prevent illicit finance. Circle is the largest US-based stablecoin issuer. Would you also provide an overview of Circle's anti-money laundering compliance program and describe the additional regulatory requirements that Circle must comply with? A lot of it overlaps with what my colleague at Coinbase said is in his compliance program. We do robust KYC, uh, sanction screening, SAR filing reports. These are all the aspects that a traditional financial firm has as well. Circle is regulated as a money transmitter in 48 states and jurisdictions. We're registered with FinCEN. These are the same type of regulations that PayPal and Venmo also comply with. We also employ blockchain analytics, uh, so we use um, the ability to look at transactions on chain so that we can see uh, illicit activity that might be using USDC, the stablecoin that we issue, uh, and we're able to work with law enforcement uh, when we see that activity or they alert us to activity as well. 
So there you guys have it. Confirmation that Elizabeth Warren is an absolute clown and she is lying. I mean, it's all fake news regarding this idea of anti money laundering. Now, is she just talking about Bitcoin? Because her, you know, boyfriend, Jamie Dimon, um, is out here spewing nonsense regarding Bitcoin and how its only use case is, you know, terrorist financing and, oh, drug trafficking and human trafficking. But guess what? The traditional banking sector is banking the same people that are doing these lo- doing these illegal activities at the same exact time that it's all done through fiat currency. I mean, how hypocritical could you possibly be? Beyond this, Perry Ann, you all know Perry Ann, um, did you know that a concerning 19% of the U.S. Senate supports a bill that effectively bans crypto? The crypto community is confronting a significant challenge. Gain insights into this pivotal issue through my exclusive interview with uh, Zach Guzman and uh, Coinage Media. Now, when we actually look at the video that she put out, this is her full breakdown on this. And we actually have this is how Senator Elizabeth Warren has misled the U.S. Congress in her effort to end crypto in America. Check it out. It's important that the industry understands that in the Senate, Elizabeth Warren has put forward a bill that would effectively ban this industry in the United States. Um, She has really misconstrued what this legislation does. She doesn't um, purport it to be a ban. She calls it an anti-money laundering regulatory fix uh, for crypto, which really is just is very misleading um, because it puts unworkable requirements on the technology itself. Uh, she's been able to recruit 19 co-sponsors uh, to this bill. So we have 19% of the U.S. Senate today is on record wanting to effectively ban cryptocurrencies in the United States. We are facing an existential threat today in Washington. It is absolutely critical that the community participates in the political process and ensures that anti-crypto politicians are not elected into office because they are out there, they are targeting us, and they don't think we have a right to exist. And if we don't show up, if we don't participate, we have everything to lose as a community. Now, I completely agree with her. Listen, we need to sign the petition. I kept uh, sharing it in recent videos. If you guys do want to go find this, you guys are more than welcome to go check it out from Perry and DC. Um, but regardless of this, right, like we have major threats in power in the US that although are not getting their bills, you know, completely approved, like Elizabeth Warren has pretty much failed endlessly on bills that she has tried to uh, get approved. But the way that she works is she utilizes her connections and the people that she knows to make specific decisions. For an example, she was always whispering in the ears of bankers and even regulators, specifically Gary Gensler. She has always mentioned to Gary Gensler, hey, crypto is this, crypto is that. There was, a, there was even full-on proof that she was emailing Gary Gensler questions and answers before a specific hearing. When you think about that, let me ask you all this. Does that sound like the right thing to do? Does that sound like, oh, hey, they're acting in the best interest of the retail sector? No, they are working together to twist the wards and twist the idea of crypto to make it seem like crypto's the bad guy in the room. We need to go after it. We need to make sure that this does not succeed. And why is that? Is it because they are old age and they don't understand it? Because that's what Brian Brooks has said in the past, which I'm typically always supportive of Brian Brooks. Or is it the fact that crypto is a significant threat to the banking sector and they need to stop it because banks are in panic mode? I tend to agree with the second part, but listen to what Brian Brooks is speaking regarding regarding crypto regulation in the U.S. um, and also what he is talking about when it comes to the big problem that we actually have. And it's it's actually the age of our leadership in both parties. Listen closely. I'm going to argue that one of the biggest problems we have as a country is the age of our leadership in both parties, Mm -hmm. you know. So what was interesting is when when Patrick McHenry's stablecoin bill was coming out of the House Financial Services Committee just a couple of months ago, 
there was democratic support, but it wasn't from the leadership of the committee. It was from the junior backbenchers uh, on the committee, right? The Democrats under 50 tended to support the bill, whereas, you know, Maxine Waters, who's in her 80s, and a number of other people who don't understand crypto and will never understand crypto are opposed. It would be kind of like if you asked my grandmother to vote on a on a on a video cassette recorder bill. She'd be against it because she can never figure out how to program it, so she'd just as soon ban it. But everybody younger than her was super excited about their VCR in the 80s, right? It's the very same thing here. There's a generational shift that has to has to happen. And I think that it's less of a partisan issue, more of a generational issue. They have to understand this technology is real, it's adopted, it's not going anywhere. And so the only way to make it safe is to do something to provide a framework. Now, again, you could argue that this is the case, right? Oh, it's they're just old, they don't understand it. Or if we look back in time, we can see that there is something much bigger going on. Here we have from Mr. Huber. Now guess for who the responsible person for delisting XRP for New York Financial Services worked for. Ah, uh, yes, you guessed it, Sullivan and Cromwell. This is the same company. This is the same law firm that a lot of those individuals from the SEC went over to work for. We have back here, right? This is going back to September of 2023. We have breaking New York crypto regulator removes XRP from its approved list of cryptocurrency. After it was determined not to be a security, it's not even a security if Ripple sells it on exchanges. Yeah, this move isn't political or punitive in nature. And remember what I've always said, right? Like there's competition in this space and there's, there's individuals that will go to any length to get what they want. When it comes to Ethereum, when it comes to Ripple, we could argue the whole idea of ETHgate, which is 100% real. Um, but I also think that there's a much larger problem here. And I do think that it goes back to the idea of XRP, Ripple being a threat um, and being a big problem. And the, the same even goes with what's happening now with Elizabeth Warren. Guys, go look at the connections with Elizabeth Warren. She's buddy buddy with Brad Sherman. These are pro bankers. They work for the bankers. They love the bankers. They have connections to the regulators. And when we look at this post, this goes back to July of 2022. This was the announce, uh, announcement of JP Morgan with Onyx, right? What Onyx does. This is private blockchain-based technology. This is all talking about the next generation, automation programmability, all that kind of good stuff that we all know about now at this point, and it's transforming the future of banking. We have, if you followed ETHgate, everything will come together after watching this. Clayton Hinman, you know, all of them, everything, consensus ETH, Web3, the metaverse, fine, the, they, all of this. They never thought we'd put it together. Ripple was a threat. The SEC was the weapon. Those disguised whales must be shown. And yes, I 100% agree. Listen, go back to this video that got posted by Ashley Prosper One. I have finally received the video from um, MIT CNC where Brad Garlinghouse mentions that 15 senior JP Morgan executives in his office. Not much to see, really, but interesting to hear him talk about JP Morgan's scheming ways. We'll make the full video available soon. And guys, when we look at this, right, think about it. JP Morgan launches this private based um, technology around blockchain on ETH while Ripple and XRP are getting targeted by the SEC, the regulators. I mean, think about how crazy this is. And then you also have all of these big players like Elizabeth Warren looking to regulators, commingling with them. At the same exact time that they're pushing the idea that crypto needs to be regulated, crypto is a problem, while letting these major banks go forward on with their blockchain-based technology that's all private on Ethereum. Now, does it make sense? But listen closely to this. I personally believe that JP Morgan was looking over Ripple's tech stack, and they probably utilized some of the information regarding that for Onyx. When we talk about Jamie Dimon, we first have to recognize where he sits. Uh, he sits at the top of the global financial infrastructure. There are a few banks, of which JPM is certainly one, that make billions and billions of dollars of profit by virtue of that perch. 99.9% you know, .9 of banks don't make money in this ecosystem in terms of cross-border payments. Jamie Dimon makes a technical term of a shit ton of money by sitting there. <laughs> So when I hear Jamie Dimon saying he's a fraud, I think to myself, well, of course he's going to say that. He's talking, I mean, and by the way, there's also, you know, people who uh, conspiratorially, uh, that he's trying to talk down the price of Bitcoin so he can, JPM can buy it. Like the, the idea that, 
the idea that JP Morgan isn't actively working in the blockchain and Bitcoin space is not true. Uh, I mean, I, frankly, I don't mind sharing. There are about 15 senior J.P. Morgan people at Ripple's offices this afternoon. Mm. Now, unless J.P. Morgan is going to fire them. <laughs> I, Does J.P. Diamond know that? I, apparently not. <laughs> anyway, so look, that's my thought on the whole J.P. Diamond thing. I do think there are people who are going to say this is, you know, uh, in the same manner. A very smart investor said to me, uh, you know, in 1997, the whole West Coast was long Amazon and the whole East Coast was shorting Amazon. We saw how that worked out. And his point was basically, look, you know, the West Coast is obviously bullish and, you know, there's some that are very cynical about these things and, you know, we'll see how it works out. On the, the risk factor, just very briefly, because I don't want to go on too long, but I think what we have to remind ourselves is this has to come back to utility. What problem is the digital asset solving? If it's solving a real problem and it's creating value by solving that problem, then there will be value in the token. I think what's risky is there's a lot of these things, as Juan was saying, that like I cannot explain why you need a token. I can't explain what the token does. I can't. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I think, unfortunately, I think that percentage, particularly in the recent ICO wave, I think that percentage is a very high percentage. I think there is going to be uh, carnage to be had from that. And I think what you know, Grant is more smarter than I am in many ways, not the least of which is on the law. But you know, the ICOs. Regulation around the SEC regulation around securities are designed to protect investors and so there you guys have it. And again, you know, this is proof of the fact that like JP Morgan was looking into Ripple. They were doing their research on Ripple. They knew what Ripple was. They understood the threat that Ripple did provide to them. So when we really look at what's going on with all of this, I have a very, very hard time believing the fact that, oh, it's just because they're old age, they don't understand the technology. I strongly believe that they do understand the, the technology. I think that when we really look at what's really going on behind closed doors, it's all to protect the bankers. I really do think that w w when it comes to crypto, this is going to be an asset class that transcends pretty much every single asset class in history, especially when we talk about tokenization as a service and how much money is tied to that. They're not going to slow down technology. They're not going to stop technology. This is going to continue to thrive. It's going to continue to make waves in the real world and it's going to be an asset class that in five ten years from now is going to be looked back on as one of the biggest opportunities to make a ton of wealth and invest in the technology stacks that every single major bank every single you know credit card company any co company out there enterprises they're all going to be flooding in because guess what this technology is not slowing down. It's continuing to thrive. In order to tap into AI at scale, you need blockchain-based technology. This is the future. It's happening. And these regulators, all of these big players trying to you know, slow it down or try to kill it, they're going to fail. Nine times out of 10, that one time that they get through, they might try to get a lawsuit. They might try to slow things down. And depending on that company, it will either kill them or they will walk out of that lawsuit victorious like Ripple is most likely going to, especially when it comes to institutional sales. I do think that those are going to get squashed. I believe that Ripple continues to win. And XRP right now, guys, for the next two years at least, it's cleared as a currency. It has clarity. And with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and check the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.